we almost made it a full year without an airlift problem and it caught up to us. What is up guys and welcome back. As you can see from the last clip, we have run into our first like serious airlift problem or management problem since having the 3H installed on the Genesis last summer. Um, I'm not gonna get into the last like six years of problems I've had with various airlift manifolds. Um, V2 was what was originally on the Genesis. I then had um, 3P on the Durango, which was plagued with issues like, oh my God. Um, and now that has now led me to having the 3H uh, was installed on the Genesis last summer because I was so tired of having the inaccuracy problems with the V2 and pressure based. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the previous things because we'd be sitting here for a, a 30 minute story time and I, I just don't feel like doing that um, in a video right now. Something must come by. If that's something that maybe is a later on video, we'll get into it. But um, long story short, had V2 in the car um, with the PBM bags. It just couldn't handle the rear sleeve bag. So for people who don't know, the Genesis Coupe comes with a shock separate from a spring. I mean, yeah, a shock separate from a spring from the factory. Um, a PBM coilover system for this car is a true strut conversion in the rear. So just like how like an FRS is, for example, it has a true strut in the rear. That's what a PBM uh, coilover kit does, is that it converts this to a true strut in the rear, which I did that because I wanted to be able to run PBM's adjustable lower control arm, which you have to have PBM's true strut conversion in order to run that. And then on top of that, I went one step further and I got the PBM bag over conversion for their struts. So that's how we have PBM air suspension on the car right now. Absolutely love this suspension, rides beautifully. It is everything I could have ever imagined. I wanted the lower control arm from PBM, like I said, uh, so that way I could add more camber by pushing out the bottom of the wheel and not tipping the top of the wheel in any further than it already is. So when you start shortening that lower control arm, or upper control arm, I mean, that's when you start running into axle problems that you see people having all over the place. Uh, it's not the way, right way to do it, but once again, that's top for another video. So, the V2, from what I was told, uh, the pressure-based system in it couldn't handle the sleeve bag that's on the rear suspension of this kit. So, that was fine. That's not their fault. Um, it's kind of an older system now. I was like, all right, that's fine. I was like, all right, I'll get 3P. And they're like, well, it might, it might still have that problem because it's pressure-based. So that's when I was like, all right, you know what? I want consistent ride heights. I'm spending some time redoing the flares. I'm getting the car rewrapped now. Let me just get pressure based, or get rid of pressure based, upgrade it to height sensors. I looked into AccuAir, but as we know, last year in 2020, AccuAir went bankrupt, enclosed, whatever happened to them. I was like, great, Airlift 3H, my only option. Let's give it a shot. So it was at the shop for like six weeks, a friend of a friend um, who, owns a shop and works at another shop on the side and stuff. He did it for me, did a great job. Uh, I think he, his install was great. He redid all the lines in the car, um, put all new or two new compressors in the car. We upgraded to um, dual 444s. I think dual 380s were in the car previously. He redid all the fittings in the tank, reran the lines, like I said, um, double checked that the bags and the suspension were all good. Um, relocated the manifold so it was like tucked out of the way in our time's way it's in the trunk liner of the car so nothing is gonna like hit it or whatever it's protected and then he obviously did the height sensors it took him a few weeks to do it longer than he thought uh, it was a lot harder of a install than he thought because the genesis doesn't have like a fixed upper a arm like say a 350z has and on top of that i have fully adjustable control arms everywhere so i need to be able to adjust the control arms and not mess with the height sensor. So what he ended up coming up with was he mounted the height sensor arms to little like C clamps that go around the control arms. So that way I can adjust the control arm. So take those off, adjust the control arm, and then just put them back on and then just recalibrate the sensors to make up for any movement in that. But absolutely loved the way he did that. That was a great idea. Super pumped with it. Um, 
So last year now, so now we get the car back, it's like August, I finish up the suspension, do a little work on the fender flares, get the car rewrapped. It's now end of October and the car is back out. Uh, driving around all fall, uh, height sensors are doing great. Pretty accurate ride heights. I only really had the car up for a month and a half, drove it a couple of times, uh, put like maybe 1100 miles on it. Um, prior to like winter coming. Um, and that's when this garage became a thing. I was like, you know what? The car just got redone. I'm not gonna let it sit outside in the snow all winter. So I'm gonna rent a garage, found this place. And uh, I was like, I wanna protect the vinyl wrap. I wanna protect the carbon hood and trunk and stuff, the wheels and all that. I just don't want the car sitting outside. Um, this way it's in a heated garage. This garage is heated. Um, just out of the element for the winter it's going to be protected so fast forward to springtime um when we did those couple of videos with the exhaust the tpms the tires all that stuff um but yeah so started driving the car all summer and i've had like a couple of weird instances where it wouldn't catch a preset or it would be too high or too low and i was like huh that's kind of weird let me try and recalibrate it wouldn't recalibrate for whatever reason. I have no idea. I have, the car hasn't been touched since it's left his shop, like the suspension aspect and the height sensor aspect of it. Um, so I have no idea why it won't recalibrate. Uh, tried a couple different times, whatever, it doesn't work. I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna keep messing with it. It's accurate enough. I just gotta press the button a couple of times, but whatever. So no big deal. Um, I got an alignment in, uh, halfway through the summer now, and I was like, you know what? It's on an alignment rack. Let me try and recalibrate while we're setting the car up and stuff. It wouldn't recalibrate even on the alignment rack. I was like, hmm, maybe it's bottoming out on the rack or something. I have no idea. So when the car is aired out, the subframe touches the ground. So I was like, maybe there's something on the rack hitting the subframe, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, no big deal. Whatever. So that takes us to the other day now when we had the major malfunction on this so i left the house i was uh, gonna drive like two miles to Dunkin' donuts then drive up the highway to go to a car wash just wash the car spray it down because it's been sitting outside for a couple of days undriven and uh it was raining and stuff so it was just real dirty so i was like get coffee on the way to the car wash then we'll come home and do whatever um so like i said i got like halfway to Dunkin' donuts and the height sensors are all over the place. They're not catching presets. It's too high, it's too low. I'm trying to press the button while driving. I was like, all right, let me just pull over on a side road. I'll shut the car off and we'll see if that helps. It like, kind of like resets it. Try that, doesn't work. I'm like, all right, well, I know the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot is freshly paved. So maybe since it's freshly paved, it's flat enough where I can recalibrate the car. So now I pull off to the side street. I'm probably like, I don't know, half a mile from Dunkin' Donuts and I hear a whoosh, boosh, and the whole car drops. Nothing was flash on the controller. I have no idea why it just did it. Um, I'm like, holy crap. It sounded like just, it sounded like the rear end just got dropped on the ground from like 10 feet up. It sounded horrible. It was rubbing like crazy. It finally shot itself back up. I'm like, great, that sucks. Uh, hopefully we didn't damage the fender flare and stuff. So we're like 500 feet from Dunkin' Donuts parking lot now about to pull in. And I noticed that the rear driver's side wheel is at 12, 12 PSI. I'm like, great. We probably debeated. I was like, what the heck happened? Uh, like I said, the tires, I only have like 800 miles on. They got plenty of life left. They still look brand new. I'm like, what the heck happened? So get to the back of the parking lot. And I look at the thing and it's not db it's just flat. I'm like, this is weird. If if it was this low in PSI, it should have db -ed. It's a stretch tire, but it wasn't, it was just flat. So I was like, so something didn't, like it didn't db -ed. it just went flat, which is super weird. Has It hasn't gone flat at all, hasn't leaked at all up until this point. So what happened in that half a mile span since it dropped? So luckily I carry a jack, an impact gun, spare tire bunch of tools in the car at all times in case something like this happens um so i jack up the car take the wheel off and start looking at the height sensor the bag the line nothing's leaking there's no no air's leaking out of anything i'm like this is weird i was like well let me check 
uh, since the tire didn't de let me try and fill it up with air while I'm sitting here. So I have an air truck in the car, um, filled the tire up, 70 PSI, while it was off the car, let it sit for like 15, 20 minutes, and it's fine. I'm like, this is super weird. Uh, so I'm like, you know what, let me, uh, let me put it back on the car. And as I was putting it back on the car, I now noticed that there was a groove worn into the tire. I was like, and that's where it hit the uh, quarter panel. Then I looked inside the quarter panel and it must have hit so hard that it rubbed through all the seal, like the sealant that I have on my OEM quarter panel on the inside. I'll show you that in a second. But at this point, I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm like super pissed, making a whole bunch of Instagram stories that I probably shouldn't because I was pissed. Should have just kept them all shut and then whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty bummed. Uh, get the car home, the tire still is holding at least a little bit of air. And I'm like, all right, I need to get this car from the house to the garage. It's like a 40 minute drive from my house to the garage through back roads. Weather said it was supposed to rain in the next like hour and a half. My girlfriend wasn't gonna be home for three hours from work. So I was like, listen, I'm gonna go to the car cause I'd rather something happen on my way there by myself, not raining than it would be if it started raining. So long story short, drive 40 minutes, tire held up fine, get here. Um, and now I got the car on jack stands and we're going over kind of what actually happened uh, when the car dropped while driving. So without further ado, we'll get into it. I'll show you the wheel, show you the inside of the quarter panel, show you the fender flare, cause that's probably the biggest bummer on it. Didn't break, just the hardware luckily, but We'll get into it and I'll show you what's going on now. All right, so now to get into what happened to the car itself, like all the damage that happened to the car. This is the rear driver's side wheel that went flat. Um, like I said, I thought it was going to be the bead on the inside, sprayed it down. We had some soapy water here. It wasn't leaking from here. I was like, maybe it was the front. Spray that down, let it sit, not leaking. Then I was like, you know what? It's at the seal. Spread the inside down, and as you can see, the seal is leaking. So, I don't know if airing the car airing out while driving uh, could cause the seal to get damaged somehow. Uh, I do know that the seal wasn't leaking previously, tire wasn't leaking, and then it dropped, and now it's leaking. So, I'm gonna put two and two together and say that they're related whatever um it's over it's done with it happened the tire's not ruined though and i can take the tire off or i can bring it to the shop get the tire taken off and reseal the wheel quick not the end of the world sucks that it happened but it is what it is um i was like how did that happen so like i said it aired out and it was rubbing on the quarter panel so i'll show you on the tire where it was rubbing i'll throw the light on but as you can see right here this is where it aired out and it aired out so hard it wouldn't go back up while i was driving this is and it wore a groove in the tire that's actually pretty deep um so i was like all right well if it hit that much force i guess that could have been the reason why it went flat and maybe that's why the steel got damaged i don't know uh, but if we come over here then my next fear was, while this was happening, was how bad is the quarter panel messed up? Or the fender flare, I should say. Luckily, this is the worst of it on the quarter panel. There's some micro cracks like here and here and up here and stuff, but those are all, you can't see them through the vinyl wrap, and I can fix that when I rewrap the car this winter. But then I started noticing that the hardware, the whole fender flare is loose. So if you can see, it just straight up blew out all of the well nuts that are holding the fender flare in. So I can just take this whole fender flare and move it. <laughs> so what I assume happened is that it aired out, the tire hit the quarter panel on the inside, the wheel hit the fender flare, the fender flare instead of cracking, it blew all this hardware out, which is great because that's probably the saved it and why it didn't get ruined any further than it did. But then we take a look inside 
the quarter panel. So this right here is my OEM quarter panel um, where it's been cut, folded over, and then sealed. Um, and you can see that it's just straight to bare metal. Absolutely worn through all the sealant that I did. And it must have hit significantly in order to just wear out the fiberglass and the sealant and all of the stuff that's been sealing up this quarter panel for the last six years. No, five years now. Um, so, yeah, that sucks. But like I said, it, uh, it isn't the end of the world. Super quick fixes. I can fix this quarter panel, the seal on it in an afternoon. I can get the tire taken off, reseal it, let that cure for a few days, and throw the tire back on, and that's that. But that still doesn't fix the problem of why the car wasn't catching presets and wasn't um, recalibrating. That's like the, the, the root of the problem is that, and that's what I need to sit here and figure out today. So I'm gonna run through, run through the car, check the high sensor arms, the rears are both good, both sides. The fronts, um, there's no brakes or cracks or nothing's broken on it. I'm gonna double check a couple of things. I think I have an idea what could um, what could be the problem. So I'm gonna check that out. Hopefully it fixes it. And then um, we'll catch back up in a second. I'm gonna run through the car. And yeah, let's go from there. All right guys, so just realized I forgot to film a bunch of stuff, but I just went through the car, double checked all the airlines, double checked all the airbags um, on the struts themselves. No leaks, nothing going on. Um, double checked the height sensor arms. They're not broken, nothing. But I did notice I started measuring the lengths of the little arms on the height sensors. So I'm going to take you into the wheel, this is on the passenger side over here. Um, I didn't film what I changed on it, but I did discover something and I'll get into it. I'll show you here right now. All right, so as you can see, this is the top of the height sensor. It has a little arm that attaches to the um, control arm right here. This is like that little C-clip I think I mentioned before. But I noticed that the length from here to here was different from this passenger side to the driver side front. The rears were almost identical um, within 0.03 inches of each other. So this side right here from here to here was almost a full three quarters of an inch shorter than the driver side. So now what this is doing, or I assume, is that this right here was getting pulled way far down. So now this side was giving me a fault sensor, uh, fault height sensor limit reached every time I'd air the car up all the way and pull out of my driveway, which meant that this whole strut was just ex overextending um, height wise. So I assume that was because this was so much shorter than the other side. Now, I haven't touched these, and there's no way for this to spin unless you take this off of this arm. So I don't know how this could have happened. Maybe it was like that previously, and it recalibrated the first time, second time, back in the fall, um, with the different lengths like that. But, so what I did was I maxed this side out. It's like 4.68 inches um, compared to it was like 4.2 inches. So we raised it up almost a half of an inch, which is pretty significant. This is way farther up. Um, that was the longest I can make this. The other side, uh, the driver's side, this arm was, it was right around 4.98 inches. So since I couldn't bring this passion side up anymore, I um, shortened the driver's side down to match the height of this side right here. I don't know if that's going to work. I wrote down the numbers for what they were before and after I did this. So if this doesn't work, um, I can just put it back to what it was. But I assume, I'm really praying, fingers crossed, that this could be the reason why um, it wouldn't recalibrate. And then 
also this does give me a little bit of a hint on why in fact it was giving me the max height reached fault when I was pulling out of my driveway so this could have been a problem this whole time and uh, we just, I just never knew about it because like I said I didn't install these because um, I don't think there's any way that these can get lengthened while it's driving the bottom of the arm is fixed the threaded rod is fixed into that and it doesn't spin so it only has one side that you can spin up and down if you unbolt it from the arm which is how I had to lengthen and shorten them um, so I assume that couldn't happen from driving worst case scenario it did they're all adjusted now they match evenly side to side they're tightened up so they shouldn't go anywhere but I'm going to end the video here because it's getting kind of late. I'm going to come back in the morning and I'm going to get this car. I'm thinking I might put it up on blocks so that the car is way up in the air and there's nothing in the undercarriage that can bottom out. Um, hopefully that'll help calibrate it. But like I said, I'm going to end this video here. Hopefully in the next one, fingers crossed, we can get this thing to calibrate. And then after we get it to calibrate, we'll go on to tackling the um quarter panel that's worn out and needs to be resealed and then i'll have to pop the fender flare off at that point to do that and then at the same time we'll replace all the hardware um so hopefully two-part video yeah. might make it into a three-part i don't know but um as of right now like i said i'm gonna go peace out catch you on the next one